So as you know at this point, in order to use L'Hopital's rule, you have to have zero over zero or infinity over infinity for these limits. In this video, you're actually going to see other indeterminate forms for which we can apply algebraic tricks in order to apply L'Hopital's rule. The first example that you're going to see is two terms that go to infinity. We have algebraic tricks that we apply to these terms to combine them into one quotient for which we can apply L'Hopital's. You'll also see an example of zero times infinity. This is a particularly common indeterminate form and you're gonna see different tricks for attacking that. We also have zero raised to the zero power. You're gonna notice in this example, we're gonna use logarithms like we did with logarithmic differentiation to attack this. Finally, the other important indeterminate forms that you will see in calculus circumstances are infinity raised to the zero power and then one raised to the infinity. These last two here are particularly important for some very important proofs that you're gonna see in later calculus classes. All right, so in this example, we're trying to evaluate the limit as x approaches pi over two from the left or from below of the function secant of x minus tangent of x. And remember, first thing we always try is direct substitution. And here I'm just using my knowledge of the graph of these functions and the fact they have vertical asymptotes at pi over two to find these limits. So if we look at our secant functions graph and approach pi over two from the left or from below, secant approaches positive infinity as we approach that vertical asymptote from that direction and we're subtracting away from that the behavior of our tangent function as x approaches pi over two from the left well we have another vertical asymptote there as well and tangent approaches positive infinity as we approach pi over two from the left so when we try to use direct substitution or evaluate our limit piece by piece we end up with that indeterminate difference of infinity minus infinity remember L'Hopital's rule only applies to indeterminate quotients. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is figure out how to rewrite our function or our limit so that it becomes an indeterminate quotient instead of this indeterminate difference. And usually there's kind of two strategies that are commonly used for working with these indeterminate differences. One is to try to find a common denominator if it is possible, and the other is to use properties of exponential and logarithmic functions. So in this example, we'll be able to actually resolve this limit by finding a common denominator. The key here is to observe that we can rewrite these functions and therefore the limit itself, secant of x is equivalent to one over cosine of x and tangent of x is equivalent to sine of x over cosine of x. And now we can see writing our functions in this alternative form, we'll be able to write them with a common denominator and write it as a single fraction giving us the potential for an indeterminate quotient. So let's go ahead and do that as our next step. So this is the same as the limit as x approaches pi over two from the left of just one minus sine of x all over cosine of x, right? We just put these fractions together with their common denominator. And now if we attempt to evaluate this limit using direct substitution, what happens to sine at pi over two? Well, sine becomes one, so that's one minus one in our numerator, or zero in our numerator. And what happens to cosine at pi over two? Well, that is zero. So we do now have our indeterminate quotient, zero over zero, so we can invoke L'Hopital's rule. So according to L'Hopital's rule, our limit is equivalent to the limit as x approaches pi over two from the left of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of one minus sine of x is gonna be negative cosine of x. And the derivative of cosine of x is gonna be negative sine of x. And so now if we try to evaluate our limit using direct substitution again, cosine goes to zero at pi over two and sine goes to positive one. So negative sine goes to negative one, but that negative sine doesn't really matter. That's zero in our numerator zeros everything out. And so using a little bit of algebra and L'Hopital's rule, we found our limit. The limit as x approaches pi over two from the left of secant of x minus tangent of x is equal to zero. All right, so in this example, we are trying to evaluate the limit as x approaches zero from the right or from above of the function x times the natural log of x. And right, we have this one side limit because our natural log component of this function is only defined for those positive x values. If we try to evaluate this limit using direct substitution or thinking about doing it piece by piece, 
what happens to x as x approaches zero. Well, x goes to zero. And what happens to our natural log function as x approaches zero from the right? Well, if you remember the graph of your natural log function, it has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. And so it approaches negative infinity as we approach zero from the right. So we have an indeterminate form. We're encountering our indeterminate product zero times infinity, and it could be positive or negative infinity. So for this indeterminate form, L'Hopital's rule does not apply. In order to use L'Hopital's rule to find this limit algebraically, we have to first rewrite our function. And there is a, a trick that works almost every single time for these indeterminate products. So if we have an indeterminate product, like f times g is approaching 0 times infinity or something like that, then what we always do or always try to do is rewrite the function f times g in an alternative form as either f divided by 1 over g or as g divided by 1 over f, right? Dividing by that fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So algebraically, these are equivalent to the product of f times g. The idea is when we write them in these forms, though, we'll actually encounter the indeterminate forms for which L'Hopital's rule applies, 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And you have to be careful when you are doing this. You have to kind of make a choice of which function are you going to send to the denominator and reciprocate. And to help us make that choice, sometimes it's done by trial and error. But sometimes we want to think ahead, like which function is going to be easier to differentiate when it's 1 over itself. So going back to our original function and limit here in this example, instead of working with the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x times the natural log of x, we're going to have to rewrite this as either x divided by 1 over the natural log of x or the natural log of x divided by 1 over x. And here, we're going to want to try that second option, the natural log of x divided by 1 over x, mainly because these pieces are going to be easier to differentiate individually, right? Trying to differentiate 1 over the natural log of x is going to be a bit harder than differentiating just 1 over x. But before we try to do any differentiation or anything like that, we first have to verify that L'Hopital's rule now applies. So if we try to take the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, of this rewritten form of our function. We already talked about what happens to the natural log component as x approaches 0. That approaches negative infinity. And the function 1 over x, we remember, looks something like this. It also has a vertical asymptote at 0. And as we approach that vertical asymptote from the right, 1 over x diverges off towards positive infinity. So now we've taken our indeterminate product, done some algebraic manipulation, and now it is an indeterminate quotient, and so we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So according to L'Hopital's rule, our original limit in that rewritten form is going to be equivalent to the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the derivative of our numerator, which is just the natural log of x. Remember, the derivative of the natural log of x is just 1 over x. And we have to divide that by the derivative of our denominator so we have to divide that by the derivative of 1 over x, which is going to be negative 1 over x squared. And so now we could try to evaluate here again, plug in our zeros. But after every iteration of L'Hopital's rule, you don't want to plug in your limit value right away. First, you want to try to simplify your expression if it is possible to do so. So here it is possible to simplify our expression or our limit. So we can write this as 1 over x. And whenever we divide by a fraction, we can multiply by its reciprocal instead. So instead of dividing by negative 1 over x squared, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal x squared over negative 1. And when we do that, we can see some of these x factors cancel. And what we're really left with after the dust settles is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of just negative x. And now that is a nice little polynomial. We can find that limit using direct substitution. And if we plug in x equals 0, we just get 0. So it took a bit more work, but we were able to find this limit algebraically using L'Hopital's rule. We now know that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x times the natural log of x is equal to 0. And this is going to be our go-to strategy for evaluating these indeterminate products. Just 
rewrite it as a, a quotient f divided by 1 over g or g divided by 1 over f. And remember, if your first choice doesn't work out, try the other option and see if that will resolve your limit. All right, so let's go ahead and try to evaluate this limit. Here we're looking at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the function x to the power of x, right? And for all of our limits, we got to try direct substitution first. If we attempt to just plug in x equals 0, well, very quickly, we get 0 to the power of 0. And that was one of those less common indeterminate forms, but still an indeterminate form. A strategy that tends to work pretty well is using properties of exponents and logarithms to manipulate and rewrite your limit. And so how is that going to work here? Well, the idea is we're going to start by assuming that our limit exists and we'll give it some name, call it y. So let y be the value that comes out of the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x to the power of x. So then what we can do is take the logarithm, the natural log of both sides of our equation. So on the left hand side, we'd get the natural log of y. On the right hand side, we get the natural log of the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x to the power of x. But we can use some of those limit laws, properties of limits, and properties of the natural log function to rewrite this. So the first thing we'll do is maybe pull the limit outside of our natural log function. Because the natural log is a continuous function, we can do that. So then we're really looking at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the natural log of our original function x to the power of x. And so now from here, we want to manipulate it a little bit further, right? The left hand side isn't really our limit value anymore. It's the natural log of our limit value. And on the right hand side, we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of now x times the natural log of x. And we actually saw this limit in one of our earlier examples. Remember, in that earlier example, we saw that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x times the natural log of x was equal to 0. So we can recycle that or use that fact. We don't have to go through that process again. So if we use our result from earlier, then we know the natural log of y. The natural log of our true limit value is going to be equal to the value of this limit. We just mentioned this limit. We know its value. It's equal to exactly 0. So the natural log of y equals 0 is what we get out of this mess. But remember, that is not our final answer. Our final answer is really y. y is representing our original limit. What we have is the natural log of our y value. So now we have to rewrite our equation here in that original form or kind of solve it for y. And when we do that, again, just using properties of uh, exponentials and logarithms, this is equivalent to y being e to the power of 0. Remember, y was our original limit. So our original limit is equal to e to the power of 0. And e to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So now we know the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x to the power of x is equal to 1. And so kind of this logarithmic or exponential approach is very effective when you have kind of these indeterminate forms involving these powers like uh, 1 to the power of infinity or 0 to the power of 0. Those are good spots to try this approach.